want to say good afternoon and welcome to the Give West Center. I am Mr. Moore. I'm the assistant principal of Title I, curriculum, sixth and seventh grade. And again, I want to thank you all for coming out today for our Title I instructional technology meeting that we have here today. What is Title I? And what is the plan and the promise? We will be going over, I'm going to do, uh, as we get finished, I'm going to be asking you guys to complete the um, evaluation form. It is very important that you guys be honest and complete those forms for us. I'm going to talk about the instructional technology programs we have here. That will be Mr. Johnson, who's standing behind you recording. We will go over, she was discussing the parent portal, assessment, and our e class. Parent portal, parent square, my payment plus resources that the Gift Center offers, such as IXL, Admentum, Delta Map, iReady, and Achieve 3000. And then I'll be giving the closing remarks. Again, welcome. The Gift West Center, I mean the Gift West, the Gift Center West Instructional Technology Meeting will provide participants with information on a wide range of innovative technologies for improving the learning environment. We, we here at Give West um, are equipped with resources to help engage, enrich, and challenge our students during the learning process. Students have access to Chromebooks, interactive whiteboards, online subscriptions, and a wide variety of instructional technology. Title I program. The Title I program is the largest federal assistance program for schools. It provides support to students who are at risk of not meeting the state academic standards. It determines the, uh, the fund is determined by the number of students receiving free or reduced lunch. That's why it's so important when you guys enroll your, your students at school that you complete that free or reduced lunch form because it, 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 it can hurt in two ways. If you don't feel it out, your child will eventually end up paying for lunch and breakfast. Also, it hurts the school because the money that the school can make off your that one particular child, that's money that that, uh, that can sponsor a Chromebook and a teacher. These um, resources that we have, like I talked about before, the Excel, Admentum. For example, this year I paid $27,000 for an online program that we work with our children who are not here in the school who um, want to do online learning, that's $27,000. Even for our students who have failed the course, with a fifth year or above, we can put them on this ed mental program, get them caught up real fast, and put them back on track for graduation. So that's why it's very important we complete those forms. Title I support parents and families by offering activities and training opportunities to increase engagement in their children's education. There are two types of um, Title I programs, targeted assistance. No schools in GCPS participate in the targeted assistance program. School-wide, we have a total of 78 schools in Gwinnett County that are, uh, that falls under Title I. Uh, for example, North Gwinnett is not a Title I school. Brookwood is not a Title I school. Um, I think the Cula, those schools over there, are not Title I school because they, 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 um, numbers are very, very low when it comes to free and reduced lunch. Uh, GCP has received Title I funds from the United States Department of Education via the Georgia Department of Education to provide additional resources to assist with the education of our children. School-wide programs. All the students at the school benefit from Title I funds. Materials, equipment, technology, professional development, extended learning time. What I just talked about for how students get caught up. It, uh, salaries of some teachers and the parent center are some of the possible items funded through Title I. When it talks about the resources, for example, um, uh, oh, I can't get it. Um, the salaries of some teachers. Let's hypothetically say the school, um, the Georgia Department of Education, give teacher points based off the students enrolled at school. So in their mind, they have a mind, they have an idea that let's say ten kids per teacher class. But so they going if you have a hundred a hundred students, they're gonna go allot you for ten teachers. But everything is a year in the rear, meaning that they look at the students that were there last year. 
So let's say that you get more students that come over the summer. Now, the, the, the state is determined and banking on 100 students showing up. But you got 150 now. But you only got a lot of the 10 teachers. We take that Title I money and pay for teachers out of that Title I money so we can have enough teachers to cover our students. So that's what it's talking about when it says salary of some teachers. Our plan. A copy of the plan promise can be found on the school website, Parents Square, and in the Parent Center. Um, I will hope that everyone in here had the opportunity to look at our school website and review the material that's, that's listed. Uh, describe how our students will provide opportunities to improve family engagement that will support student learning at school and at home. Our promise. It is written in agreement that outlines how the school, the students, and family will work together to ensure your child's academic success. All right, the, uh, this is the evaluation form. After this meeting, I want you to take a minute or two to complete the evaluation form. Your input is very valuable to us. We want to give our students the best possible learning experience we can do, and we can't do it without you guys. We need your thoughts and feedback on how we are doing. What can we do to make it better? And any ideas can help that make our school, not center, but our school, the best we can be. That is it for me. Ms. Johnson is about to come up and do her part. Please ask questions. Um, help yourself to some snacks. I know we had some people just come in. Um, that's a little bit later after we started. Um, feel free to stay behind. I don't mind going back over again. Even Ms. Johnson. What do you see when you log in? 
Yeah, you have really attendance, calendar, like course, course history, course, 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 course all these different uh, embedded apps that, that you can click on to find out information about your student. This is what it looks like online, and then this is what it looks like via the app. Okay, so you have access to that same information um, via both platforms. Now, we also have Parent Square. So we got Parent View and then we have Parent Square. Parent Square is um, our platform to, to provide um, a way for the district, principals, teachers, staff, parents. Ms. Garcia sends out messages via Parent Square. I do as well for, for administration. And uh, we send that out so you can receive. Um, and send information, you can actually communicate back and forth with Parent Square, especially with your teachers. Okay. The main thing that's changed this year with Parent Square is um, Mr. Moore talked about the plan and the promise. They've actually uploaded it here. So if you have Parent Square, you should be receiving notices. I've been sending out reminders. This is where you go to sign your back to school agreements. Okay. Back in the day, it used to be by hand in the handbook. We signed it, then we went to My Campus Plus, and now we have it via the Parent Square. So this is what that notice looks like, and you just scroll through, and you'll be able to sign the documents for back to school, and the plan and the promise is included in that as well. Yes? So I went there, but did not see where I was. I think a month ago I was able to sign. Mm -hmm. But on the majority of them, it's just really Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yes. So just like, like I said before, we had the handbooks back in the day. Okay. okay. My oldest child is like 23. So we used to have the handbook. We have to scroll, you know, flip through the handbook, and you sign the page, and then you cut off those little bottom sheets. But now they went to the electronic. Okay. It was in my payments, and now it's here in Parent Square. So as you scroll through, it will say yes. So if you click on the free reduced application, you scroll through it, say yes, that you Okay, and so for each of those little separate sections, okay. you just click yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it should be a green link there, and once you click on that link, it opens up another little part that you just read through all those documents, and you should be able to just come back to it and click yes. But I can take Do you have to do it for every student? If you have it at like you have one here, you have another one on another school. I believe probably so because they send it from the county on behalf yeah. of each school. Yeah. So if you have it for one student at one school, so like um, Mr. Moore was saying, Give West is a Title I school. Yeah. My daughter's at Prince is not Title I school. So they don't have a place to promise on there. So depending on if yeah, you have more than one, you probably, and I'm making an assumption, that you'll have to sign it for both kids. Thank you. Yes, that's a good question. Yeah, because my daughter doesn't have it um, under, under group rules or some other school for um, playing promise title one. Parent Square is also where they'll communicate weather related uh, closings or delays. So if school is delayed or closed, they'll send out messages there. School and class information, as I said before, many of the teachers here have Parent Square accounts and parents communicate through the Parent Square. Teachers can respond to your Parent Square. Okay, and it translates to the the school related points that I've talked about before, we do share um, files and such via the parents where I send out information about the work permit, uh, enrollment, certificate of enrollment process. If your student drives, we also uploaded that information here, and that can be through Ms. Mom in the front office. And then if we have information related to the calendar, that is located on the parents where as well. Okay. So, to sum that up, you have the two platforms, Parent View and Parent Square. Parent View, enrollment records, progress, attendance, grades, schedule, course history, graduation requirements. That translates and see records for any of your, your children. Okay. Then on the Parent Square side, you can connect with your teachers, the school staff, um, send and receive messages. Communicating in your preferred language, you can direct message those teachers and staff, and then it has um, if you're part of like an organization as well, they communicate via Parent Square as well. Any questions about the two?
and it helps me because I get confused sometimes, even as a teacher, a uh, uh, tech teacher and parent, the two icons. Okay. All right, so my payment is plus. For my payment plus, you register through the district. In your uh, main email password, most of you should already have the thing is plus account set up. Mainly for paying fees, um, lunch, cafeteria accounts, for activities, and things of that sort. Not so much here, they get less, but if you have um, high degree you would pay for those. All right, so the student portal. Um, hopefully you can have your student occasionally log into the student portal um, so that you can see what they see when they go into the portal. And you have access here to the digital textbooks, that's your online textbooks, and resources, additional resources like Adobe. Every student here has access to an uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, that's like the PDF Express. Google has a Google Workspace. They have, um, Google Drive, they have Google Docs, slides and such. And then Microsoft Office, they actually have access to full versions of PowerPoint, Word, Excel, if they still need to choose to use those platforms as well. So that's all located in the additional resources section of Parent Portal. There are additional um, resources here as well, and those teachers will be the ones who would assign those assignments. I ready, uh, amplify reading, Delta Math, etc. My e class is also located here, which is over here on the right. The students have a similar platform called Student View. They have an app for that, just like the parents. You all have a parent that looks similar with the little multicolored circle. And my e-class is where they will find all their course information, their teachers upload their assignments, details, lesson plans there, and they have the links, the live links, so that the student can go to whatever activity they want. And then the multimedia uh, catalog is listed as well. All right, so this is what the students see when they log into their e-class pages. Hopefully you've seen these before as well. Um, they, they're, the list of their teachers are located from the little drop down called the waffle. If you click on the waffle over there at the top, and it drops down to show all of their current classes. Okay. If there's ever an issue with that, if you call the main office, they'll likely transfer you to me, uh, transfer you to me and I can get you into those classes if for some reason you don't see a class that you're going to shoot. As I stated before, students have student view, parents have parent view. For student view, the students can see very similar information on their end. Main thing is that they can see messages from their teachers. The calendar is there. Their attendance. Their class schedule is there. Course history. Course requests. If they have any fees, they can see their grade book. MTSS that's for um, behavior PDIS points and then your info. Um, the Chromebook AUP is something that they'll need to sign off on, but that uh, platform is not working right now. But I will notify teachers when it's back up so that they can sign off on that. And then any documents can be listed there. Our online programs that we have here at the LS. We have Delta Math. This is where they can practice and get feedback on um, math assignments. I already provides lessons and games in math and language arts. And they motivate students and support learning. Achieve 3000 is for students um, focusing on math and language arts. Google Workspace for Education, as I stated before, they have a Google Drive where they can store their documents. And they also have a Gmail account. They, they can only communicate teacher to student, no outside of Microsoft Office 365, as I stated before, they have full access to the version of Word, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, um, notes in there, and um, <coughs> and then for Adobe Creative Cloud, Cloud like I said before, they can use that to create like um, flyers and things of that sort. So those are all full versions of those. All right, 
I Excel focuses on language arts, math, and science. And this allows students to practice topics related to those three subjects at their own pace. So it's kind of like a um, tutorial, work, working their way through it. And if they need help, it goes back and re-enriches them on those specific topics. So if they need help in, say, algebra, then they can do the lessons. If they're struggling with the concept based on their responses, then it'll assist them in getting the correct answer and how to solve it. And Mentum is another platform that we use here at Give Less. This helps to reach graduation goals. So if they follow a little behind, we're here to help them satisfy those uh, graduation requirements beyond um, their current status. And it provides flexible and personalized lessons, um, credit recovery, and expanded course access. And this provides course recovery for those students um, that need it. And it helps them relearn topics. They may, they, have, they may have struggled with. Any questions? I, I said a lot, but we will post all this uh, information. It's also on the, the website. If you click in the technology section, you'll be able to see those items. But as I said before, in the portal, the teachers will assign those assignments based on those portal um, accesses for whichever platform that your student is using. Okay. They had a yellow paper with the evaluation. They had a yellow paper in the folder. Okay. Uh, you guys have a yellow paper that's uh, inside the folder that's considered our survey. Uh, we have a uh, side that's for English speaking and we have a uh, Spanish speaking on the other side. Please take this moment uh, to complete those forms and those surveys. Again, complete them all. If you have any suggestions, make sure you put those on there so we can go in there. Take in the feedback and, and, make, and make things better. Y Okay, si se pueden quitar por favor el aparatico, lo pueden apagar ya. Anybody else need help with the parent square? Like I said before, all the documents that you have to sign are electronic.